What is up, gang? It is I, Carlton Flowers, your crypto pro. Yay! And as promised, just before the day has ended, we've got your CASPA update. All right, so in today's video, we are going to talk about the CASPA price action. And I warn you that this is definitely not financial advice. I'm just talking about what the chart reads at the moment and what it is telling us that the price line wants to do in the near future and medium range time frames. Now, also keep in mind that the charts can flip on a moment's notice and a wheel can screw up even the most clear indications that tell us where the price line is going to go next. But we just do the best we can do and call it like we see it. So here we are on the four hour chart. And as we discussed before, we were looking at the support price line of uh, 1.7 cents, 0.017. The last time that I gave you a video, we talked about the fact that all eyes were on the 1.7 cents level, about right here. And I was saying that if we failed this zone up here, because we were up here in zone number two, let's go ahead and number these zones so that you all know what I'm talking about. This top zone is number one, support resistance zone number one. Then the second one is here, and then here we have the third one. There is a fourth down below, but we don't see that until the one-day chart. So we were talking about in the last video of the possibility of failing zone two. And I said that if we fell through, we came back up, we went up above it. I said if we fail the support down here, that we were going to fall down and test zone three, and the first target would be 1.7 cents. That has happened. All right. Uh, we had also talked <clears throat> about falling away from this 50 EMA line, which we did. We failed the 50 EMA on the four hour. And of course, that confirmed the downtrend. So we did make it. We had a touchdown to 0.017 right there. And well, what has happened? We failed that. Now, I put up a post in the community section and tell me in the comments, do you like it when I update you with the community posts to let you know when there's a technical event about to happen? Until we get the 10,000 subs, which by the way, help a brother out, pass the word, get me to 10,000. Until we get to 10,000, I can give these TA updates very quickly on the community tab as a picture and all my arrows and drawings included with the description of the analysis. So that'll be something good to hold us over. Well, back to the charge. We failed 1.7. We bombed on down. And I said the next thing that we need to know, are we going to fail the support? Whoops, we need an arrow. Are we going to fail the bottom support line of zone 3? And the answer to that question is yes, because we had one candle that made it through, and then we had two on the four hour that closed below. There's the third and there's the fourth, even though we have a green candle. Pretty much we failed it. <clears throat> Stochastic is looking a little weak on the four hour. We are in oversold, but as soon as we try to make it back up, we tend to bounce back down and go bearish again. And we are kind of settling down on the oscillators and the action with the MACD histogram. Whereas you can see these, uh, the peaks and the troughs are getting more shallow. See how this is happening here? But the overall direction is still negative. So it's looking, oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's looking like this, okay? So it's kind of making a descending wedge, <clears throat> which tells me that maybe my next worst case scenario, well not worst case, my most likely target that's coming up in the next video I think is going to happen at the end of this falling wedge pattern which contains the oscillators and the histogram on the MACD. So that's the four hour chart. Let's jump to the one day chart. And here we will be able to see all four zones 
on the screen along with some nice VPVR action. Let's go ahead and <clears throat> number the zones. There's zone one up at the top, two, three, and then fours down at the bottom, okay? So here we can also clearly see that we did fail the bottom of this zone and you can see that we had a clear candle top at the uh, lower support line of zone two and then we wicked above that which says that this limit here the lower limit in zone two that's that's a pretty good uh, limit there we're going to be able to use that for future action for pivots so after falling through there we entered zone three and we failed it now the only good thing about this is is that we don't have confirmation yet because we have only closed one candle which is green that is outside of the box. That means that we could jump back up uh, according to this chart and find support again. So maybe I need to adjust my analysis here. Hmm. Well, I'll save that for the end. But for right now, I would say that with this stochastic looking like it was going to come up, but then it turned right around, and crossed over bearish again. We keep getting these fake outs. We were going up here, rejection. Moved up again, rejection. Bounced up again, rejection. Bounced up again, rejection. That's four in a row, which pretty much says that our overall momentum on the stochastic oscillator is lower highs and moving us down into the oversold zone below the 80 line. Now, what is also concerning is this thing right here, okay? The fast line and the slow line on the MACD oscillators. There's the fast one, the blue. There's the slow one, the orange. And when orange is on top, we are in a bearish channel. So you can see that orange tried to go underneath and blue tried to cross over and come up. And then what did it do? It glanced off and fell away from the orange. You also see that the orange and the blue are both heading downward at the same slope. And they were equidistant from each other ever since this point right here. Notice how they're running in parallel. That's bearish. That means the momentum is solidly downward. So looking at our all-time high here, and here's the stochastic peak on the one day, here's the MACD peak of the oscillators, and our peak histogram right there. And since then, it's correction city. All right, overall momentum is doing this on the MACD. And if we look here, look what it's doing here. Same thing on the stochastic, where we have the high point, lower high after lower high after lower high. Okay, so we're in correction mode. Even though we have this little green candle here, I'm thinking we're probably going to flip that red. It's going to take some time. And we'll have to watch the four hour intervals to see if we can carry any strong momentum out of this first candle. So the chances of this are slightly bearish. I'm going to say that we're not going to make it back up to the bottom of that channel, but it's it's maybe 40% chance. We can fight our way back to the bottom of this channel. 40% chance. But I'm thinking we continue to fall down a little bit. The only good thing is we're already in oversold zone. We can't get much worse than that. But if we do bounce up, here's what could happen. I'm going to show you what could happen. Oops, let's clear all. And let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to show you a possible scenario that we might see. It is very common, actually. So let's get a line here. What can happen is we like sail down or we move up and then we hit our head on the base of zone three. And that's where we get rejected and sent downstairs where we go falling towards zone four, okay? So I would probably tell you, let's, let's just say a 50-50 shot of this green candle holding and not giving us two closes below the base. Let's say we chase back up here and we get a rejection and then we fall. If this rejection happens, then it's highly likely that uh, we're going to go down here and revisit zone four, which happens to occur at a price of about one cent. And then we'll test that. It's just below one cent. It's like 0 0.9897, somewhere around there. And the base of it is like 0 0.0093. 
So we come down here and then we either bounce and come out of that or we fail it. <laughs> and if we fail that, uh, well, get ready. It'll get really fun at that point. And it depends on what Big Brother Bitcoin is going to do and what's happening in the economy. Um, I would have to really scrunch down here to tell you what would happen if we don't make that. We're going to look at some of these previous resistance and support lines, resistance rather. And see, this support line here is based on the previous all time high. So if we fail that, I'm going to be looking very closely at this line right here. We're going to pull that on out. This one is going to be very likely to come in play again as a worst case scenario. And that has a price level of 0 0.0044, somewhere around 0 0.004445, somewhere around there. Will we make it that far? I don't know. It'd be great if we did. If we did, I'm doubling the bag. So I look at that as a positive opportunity. It wouldn't be a negative thing to me. And we can peek real quick at the one week just to see what this is looking like. You can see the free fall here. And this kind of lets you know that, yeah, it's possible. We can come down here to this base. And look how strong this base would be. So we come up all-time high. We correct. We find a base. We run. Massive run. We correct down. And we should find this as a base and move up. But then we have the next possibility of coming all the way down here to point double O four four, And then second run after that into the bull run of Bitcoin. And what's kind of a little bearish here is look where we are. We're not near oversold. We got a ways to go. We might not jump down here in the oversold zone until we get like uh, into the dog days of July. All right. But if we can finish this whole cycle out by July and find out if, if, if it's one cent or then there is another support here at point double oh eight. That could be a support. And then of course the worst case scenario point double oh forty five. Um so in summary, I'm thinking that we come back up to this support line and then start to drop down. And then we'll find out do we find support at one cent and move up into the bull market? Or do we fall down to point double oh eight and move into the bull market? Or do we have the least likely scenario? This would have to take like Bitcoin crashing to come all the way down to point double oh forty four and then bull market starts. What do you think? Post your comments below. But this has been your TA report for the CASPA action casper price action and that's all i have for now but i would love it if you would like comment and subscribe to the crypto pro channel and i will keep you updated and thank you very much to everyone who has donated to help me defray the cost of producing the channel and i will be going live and also doing a general across the board report of my top 20 projects okay showing you a rapid report of the ta of what's going on market wide top 20 projects plus my research projects which are the hidden small cap gems and then i'll even throw in the charts for the memes okay my favorite memes then we're going to go live and then that's where you can request and i'll give you my best thoughts and ta my best insight on what i see in the charts so that's what we got Thanks for tuning in. Post in the comments. Let me know what you think is going to happen. This is Carlton and I am out.